Hi, welcome back to Google Calendar 10 tips. This is tip number three. We're, we're going to look at updating your share settings by zoning in on your own calendar, your primary calendar, to see how it is currently being shared and make sure it's set up the way that you want it to be shared. And by doing that, you'll be able to manage share settings for other calendars by making them public or private or sharing them with specific people. So we're going to start by going into your general settings. We're going to open up your settings. We're going to select your personal calendar. In this case, my name is Allison Malika, so I'm going to, I'm going to select that. And on my screen right now, you can see that it says um, the check, it says access permission for events. And then do I want to make that available to the public? I can't think of any scenario where you want to make even a work related calendar available to the public because you just never know what could end up on that calendar. That's your default calendar in private meetings and private information very often ends up on that calendar. So I just really discourage you from ever making that calendar public. You most likely want to make it so that um, if you want to share it within your organization, you can like so your colleagues can see what your appointments are and you can even change it so that they can only see whether you're free or busy. They don't exactly see the details. So they don't see that you have a meeting with a parent. They don't see uh, student information. They don't see that you have a doctor's appointment, nothing like that, just free or busy. So I give you that as a premise because I want you to be thinking of that, you know, really thinking about it as you learn how to modify sharing in this. OK, so let's go into Google Calendar and remember your primary calendar is usually your specifically your name and you want to keep it that way. And then we're going to go into settings when we get to settings. We're going to select the calendar. We're going to scroll down. You can see I've got a lot of calendars <laughs> that are hidden, um, but I'm going to select my primary calendar and I'm not going to change the name of it. But if this were a new calendar, like a public calendar, maybe the parent teacher organization or a library event calendar, I might change the name. I might have it say library events, have a description, the time zone. Um, it tells you who the owner is and the organization that it's in. And if you scroll a little further down is where you could see access permission for events. So this is my primary calendar and I do not want it made available to the public. However, one thing that you should know about your organization is very often by default, your calendar is set shared with see all event details. So what you want to make sure is that do you want anyone in your organization to see your your work calendar? If not, just check that uncheck that box if it's checked. If you want them to be able to say, see if you're free or busy, go ahead and check it and set it that way. Now, this is a great thing to do as a team. So if you run a company, an organization, or a school, um, a club, or anything, you ask all of your members to make the calendar available, show uh, only the free and busy. So hiding the details protects their privacy. But that way, when someone goes to schedule a meeting and they want to find a time, they they will be able to find a time that everyone's free because every it won't it'll show them like, oh, you want to invite these three people? Well, in order to find OK, at this time or this time or this time, everyone's free. So by doing this, it really can make scheduling events a lot easier. Um, but it really just depends on the organization that you work with. So um, just pick your poison, um, decide how you want to do that. And then if you go a little further down, you can share your calendar with specific people. So if you want to turn this off completely, but you want to share this calendar back with another account you own, a colleague, a friend, a boss, a client, an assistant, you can do that as well. So many times, um, like an organization will have an assistant or an admin that's in charge of scheduling and managing events. So they will be able, they will be added to that as well. So you can add people in groups. Now, when you add someone, you can give them ultimate permissions to make changes and manage sharing, but you can also just give them permission to see all the event details or make changes to the events. So um, if you give them access to make changes and manage sharing, they are essentially an owner of that calendar. They just can't delete it. All right. 
So take a look at that. Now that you know that, if you have other calendars, let's say a Google Classroom calendar or a club calendar, and you thought, oh, I'll make that public and I'll put it on my website, you can select any calendar on your list and then go ahead and change those settings to make them available and then embed them or grab a shareable link and then copy and paste that link somewhere. So that's how you manage calendar share settings. Take a moment to get familiar with that if you're not already. And then for tip four, we'll look at creating the actual new calendar that you wanna make public.